This is example five in our applications of calculus topic. We've moved on from volumes of solids of revolution. We're going to have a look very briefly at rectilinear motion, and that is the connection between uh, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So displacement is the word that we use to represent the distance that something is traveling. Distance is a scalar quantity in the sense that distance can't ever be negative. You're just five meters away from something. However, in vector quantity displacement, we can be positive five meters or negative five meters away from something. There's a direction as well as a magnitude. So in all of these things, we're going to be using the vector um, proper quantities. So displacement would be represented normally by the letter S. And the function of displacement would normally be S of T, T being time, and all of our uh, motion uh, functions are really going to be dependent on that variable t. So we've got displacement function s of t. If we wanted to think about the rate of change of displacement, so displacement say in meters, and we think about how that changes over time, like a second per second, meters per second, then we've got a quantity of not speed, because we're dealing with vector quantities, but velocity. And velocity is the vector equivalent of speed. It has it can be positive or negative. So in other words, if we differentiate our function of displacement, we're going to get our function of velocity. And if we then have our function of velocity and think about meters per second per second, rate of change, how quickly is the velocity changing? That's what we know as acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So we can differentiate that. And we can see that there's a connection here between displacement, velocity, and acceleration. And if we want to get from one to the other, we can differentiate with respect to time. And it stands to reason that if we can differentiate to get from displacement to velocity, velocity to acceleration, we can then also integrate with respect to time. And that would allow us to uh, create a velocity function from acceleration or if we integrate a velocity function, we're going to get our displacement function. So we can effectively move from one uh, function to another by either appropriate differentiation or integration. There is a slight issue with regards to integrating these functions. It will create a, a constant of integration, which means that sometimes our functions may be just general solutions. And only if we've got extra information that we can substitute in to find that constant will we actually get a particular solution. Just to illustrate the connections here, I've got uh, uh, some graphs. We should really call that displacement um, so that we're constant in what we're talking about. Um, so we can see here the connection between the three quantities here. Um, and you could think about in general, if you're familiar with the idea of graphs of derived functions, then that's all we're doing. We've got the original function at the top, the first derivative underneath, the second derivative underneath that. And if it, can, it makes sense, a few key uh, points here. Um, here, um, it might be, um, we've got the, a turning point here, we know that the the first derivative is zero, the gradient is zero at that point, and sure enough, the velocity is zero. If we were to look at, for instance, the uh, the velocity, let's have a look at this part here. Here, uh, the velocity is decreasing in a constant manner. It's got it's a straight line. It would have some kind of uh, linear form to it. Um, and in that regard, if we were to differentiate that linear function, we end up with a constant term, which would be its acceleration. And we can see at the bottom here that indeed throughout that point there, the acceleration is constant. Okay. So that's the connection between the three. The each uh, displacement, we can differentiate to get velocity. Velocity, we can differentiate to get acceleration. And notice that the acceleration graph can sometimes be a little bit uh, disjointed, uh, just depending on the nature of the uh, original function. Okay, so let's have a look at an example, example five. Um, 
A particle starts from rest and its acceleration a after t seconds is given by the function a equals 6t plus 2 meters per second. Determine the velocity of the particle and its displacement from the start after 3 seconds. Okay, so we've got some uh, object that's moving. Now, when you're reading text like this, um, I can't emphasize enough just how much information there is in certain words. And you're not always given uh, values like uh, t equals 5 and v equals 0. Sometimes you've got to interpret words. And a particle starting from rest already is loaded with information. Uh, if it starts from rest, then these things are true. T equals 0 at the start. It tells us that the displacement is going to be 0 because we're measuring the displacement from the start. And it tells us that the velocity is 0 and even the fact that then the acceleration um, is going to be uh, 0. So that's the key things that we can actually take from that and we're going to feed that in later on. So just from the, the phrase starts from rest we can gather some valuable information. So we know that the acceleration is given by, if we want to call it a uh, of t, the function of acceleration is 6t plus 2. Now, what I was saying in the previous uh, screen is that we can look at displacement velocity and acceleration, and we can differentiate to get those. What we have uh, at the moment is the acceleration, and we want to get a function of velocity, which means we've got to integrate. So to get from acceleration to velocity, we're going to integrate. So we can say that the velocity is going to be the integral of the acceleration, 6t plus t, with respect to t. And we can do that quite easily by adding 1 to the power, divided by the new power, and we've got 2 becomes 2t, and of course we've got our very important constant of integration. And so we end up with the general solution that the velocity is 3t squared plus 2t plus c. And if we didn't know anything else, that was that's all that we could do with it. But we do know that the particle starts from rest. And therefore, we've got some key information. We can say at t equals 0, v equals 0 which means that we can substitute in 0 for velocity, 0 for time, and therefore all of these are 0, c is therefore also equal to 0, which means that we can determine our particular function that the velocity is going to be 3t squared plus 2t, and that is a fact. Okay. So we can bank that, which means that we can use that function if we want to find the velocity at any point. And the question asks us to determine its velocity after 3 seconds. So we can say that V3 is going to be when T is 3, which gives us 3 times 9 plus 6. 27 add 6 is 33, and the velocity is 3 seconds. So after 3 seconds, the velocity is 33 meters per second. Okay, that's us got the effectively the solution to the first part. Right, we've got a second part to do. It tells us that uh, we need to also determine its displacement from the start. So we can repeat the same process. Uh, I'll do it quite quickly. I want to say that we know that the velocity is 3t squared plus 2t, and we want to think about displacement. Uh, and again, we've got S, V, A, differentiation, integration. We've got velocity. We want displacement, so we integrate again. We're going to integrate t squared plus 2t with respect to t. And we end up with this, which we can simplify to t cubed plus t squared plus c.
Again, it's a general solution, but we've got this uh, fact right from the start that when t equals zero, we know that the displacement is also zero. We're measuring displacement from the start. So in this case, we can substitute zero in to get the value that again, c is zero. So our particular function of displacement is just t cubed plus t squared, and therefore at t equals three, Twenty-seven plus nine, which is thirty-six. Thirty-six what? So the displacement is just meters. Okay. So we can say that after three seconds, the displacement is thirty-six meters, and we can say that. The velocity is 33 meters per second. Okay, so we've derived all of that uh, just from the original, uh, the original uh, acceleration function, and we can use our calculus in order to work out other things involved. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. There's one other example that I've got which we can look at uh, next, just to kind of keep looking at different issues with rectilinear motion. Okay.